you see what those are? Can you guys see what those are by some chance? Good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Patty. Can you guys tell me what that is? Let's see. Is anybody paying attention to me? Anybody see me? Good morning, Linda. Linda's on. Linda's on. Ready? Holy think outside the box right there. Isn't that pretty? That's just pretty. That's just pretty. All right. Let me uh, get my camera angle going here for this morning. Because that's where we need to be. Right? Isn't it? That's made out of a family board. Family board. Believe it or not. So I'm going to show you guys that. I have some tips and tricks for that. Um, and I used... That was a bowl holder, a bow holder that I had made um, to show as an example. And I've been sitting toying with the idea for an eternity. And I thought, I gotta make this. So I did last night. But there's some things I need to talk to you about on it. And there you go. Um, this little thing is obviously your clipboard. And I hung that up because I'm going to talk to you about why hanging your clipboards can be a really cool decorative idea and it can be a um useful thing too so right there so whoop, whoop, let's start this ready for this hot mess good morning i am a hot mess this morning i do apologize um my wonderful handsome son had his problem last night he's my baby and he had prom last night, so mom was on pickup and drop-off duty. I was all over our area for the kids, so I didn't get to bed till late, which meant I woke up a little bit later than I normally do for my Sunday sass. Rolling out of bed this morning was absolutely a crime, um, but I'm here, and that's what we're doing. So, you get to deal with the hat today. I do apologize. I'm already on my second cup of coffee, if that tells you anything. Um, so there we go. It is hot in this shop. Holy Moses. You gotta get this party started a little bit higher. I need some air. Give me one second, turn on my fan. Whew, dust. All right, it is hot in here. When these presses get running, in my shop and I get both of them running plus the mug press plus the hat press and I've got all four going at the same time I'm dying I'm absolutely dying there is no it, it with the amount of windows you guys see in this place you would think that I'd have the most amazing ventilation in here and sadly I don't it's stale dead air in here so oh thank you Miriam all right Let's do this. This is the Sunday for May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. There's about as much energy as you're going to get right now. <laughs> for, yeah, like I said, May 5th. Um, we are going to talk about a bunch of different things. I'm going to show you uh, a quick, like I said, we're going to talk about that little piece of information. Um, how to think outside the box for the family boards. As you could tell, you can put your utensils right side by side. We're going to print one that I'm actually putting in my own kitchen. I do want to talk to you about these hooks. We're going to talk about that. I'm also going to be talking about how to put the pocket on the back of these seat belt covers. It's a no-sew project. Actually, you should probably do it as a no-sew project. Um, I'm going to show you how to put that on, and that's using heat bond adhesive tape and a lens cloth from Stan. So that's another thing outside the box. So there's my, my family board. Um, lots and lots to talk about. So let's get off with our typical Sunday madness. And that is a lot of you have asked for a few different things for me. Um, one of them is how I design, how, how I started, how I do my lives. Um, I honestly, when I started my lives back in August, I will be celebrating a year in August. Um, I plan on doing a huge celebration for that for my very first live that I did in our Seven More group. And that's what got me in a whole load of trouble and made me a, a, a on the team. So, no, I kid you. <laughs> it was a good thing. Um, so, how do I prep? People often ask me, how do I prep for my lives? Oops, I just kicked my thing. Um, well, I prep... 
I prep literally from the time I stop my show on Sunday and I go all week. And if you don't believe me, you can ask Jen because I will get off for my live. Stan and I usually, or Stan, Amy and I will usually have a conversation about it, what we could tweak, what we could talk about, what we can do moving forward. Hey, I've got this coming in, new stuff, as you could tell. So it literally stops from the time I shut off the camera until the following Sunday. Now, as I prep for it, I kind of let Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday be days where I get to really read our group, see where your struggles are, see what's going on. So I'm a stalker. I stalk the page and I watch all of you guys, see where you guys are at. Where's your head at? Because you know what? I'm not a mind reader and I don't have a magic eight ball. So you guys, you guys drive this show. I don't. You do. I just obviously go above and beyond at every time. So with that said, I usually start about Wednesday starting. You'll start seeing me after Amy's um, lives. I'll start posting the things for the SAS because I'm the next show that comes after that. It's typically Thursday. Sometimes I'm a little off on my game when I start posting and getting you guys um, ideas. I've already had ideas in the works. So I usually like to see where you guys are at, where you're struggling, give you guys a good full four days of just downtime, hustle time, and then come to me and say, I don't know how to do this. How am I um, going to figure this out? So that's where I start. Um, <laughs> Jen's like, true story. I really do. So I was watching a live uh, this earlier. I was watching a live on Friday, actually, as a matter of fact, from a different uh, sub place. And I have to say there was something that was said on there that I want to address. And I don't want you guys to back away from. Um, they literally came out and said... If you have a clamshell, eh, you're not really going to be able to do everything. You know, you really need a swing away. Let me got news for you, my friends. This chicky only owns two. I have two clamshells, okay? And as you know, I can do just about everything. I say just about everything because I haven't tried everything. But I can do everything that a swing away can do. It's all about just having a little ingenuity and knowing how to adjust and adapt using your press. So here's an example, okay? A swing away person doesn't really have to necessarily worry about how this, which is Amy's lunch tote, gets put into the press. Now, for a clamshell person, we do. Don't mind the silicone, no. So when you're putting this in a clamshell, you have to remember your clamshell comes down. It's going to hit here first before it hits here. Okay. So it creates a gap. So you put your cardboard in here to make it stable. And then you put the thinner spot in your press and this goes to the other end. Why? Because this end is thicker. Okay. So you really... I'm going to over-exaggerate this, but this is how it kind of goes in your press, all right? So you put this in this first, all right? A lot of people in, in this live, they said, oh, you got to move it all the way up to the front, and that's how you got to do it. No, no. Stop believing those lies, okay? I have worked my butt off to show newbies how to piece, how to work around different problems, I, I sat and I did a tutorial, literally a small mini um, video session, se small video session with Jennifer. She had problems with a cutting board for her 15 by 15, and I showed her the workaround for that. Don't let somebody rain on your beautiful rainbow because you know what? If you have a clamshell, you too can do everything a swing away can. Um, and I have to say that absolutely frustrated me because they want to push their swing away. No, I want you just to buy a press for the love of Pete. Just buy a press because I would much rather you spend your money on buying blanks and making money than worrying about some astronomically expensive heat press. I tell you over and over again, I have one from Heat Press Nation. That's Big Daddy. He is an absolute workhorse, but he takes a long time to warm up, okay? And I use him only for bigger, bigger projects. My fancier studio one that I got from Amazon, I deliberately bought an inexpensive one. Why? Because I travel with it. I needed to be able to hold it. I needed to be able to carry. I can't carry Big Daddy. Big Daddy's way too heavy for me. But I needed to be able to do that. And let me tell you, this little guy is a workhorse. He has no rocking in it like Big Daddy does. 
So I've had to learn how to adapt and change. And I express that, I can't express that enough to you guys. So, like I said, if you want to see something infuriate you really quick, tell a newbie that their clamshell is crap. That will just absolutely infuriate me. So, just if you have a clamshell, here's my preach. There's my Sunday morning preach right there. Bring it to church, everybody. Um, you could do it. You could absolutely do it. All right. So, there you go. Um, <clears throat> you want to see me get ruffled in these green eyes really go green? Dear Lord. I know a guy who's been sublating for 20 years who said he has a clamshell. Yeah. You know why? Because clamshells are actually inexpensive compared to swingaways. And I couldn't have a swingaway in my shop. Why? I just don't have the room. So let's be real for two seconds. Um, and if somebody, like I said, is raining on your rainbow, kick rocks. That's all I got to say. Preach. There's my son of Mary preach that for all those who skip church, you just got church. You're welcome. Um, the 15 by 15 cutting boards, how do you adapt to a clamshell? Okay, so there, there is a vendor who sells a, I think it's an 11, it's, it's an 11 and a half by 15. I know it's Johnson Plastics. I'm going to get in trouble for that probably. <laughs> Johnson Plastics sells it. And the only reason I know, um, the other one sells a little bit bigger than the 15, so it doesn't fit on a 15 by 15. Um, so there's that, all right? So there is a kind of slightly smaller version. So for your clamshell, okay, what you want to do is get some cardstock, all right? And do I have my, yes, I do. I'll show you, Glenn. We're gonna, we're gonna rock this out right now. We're just gonna show you. I'm not going to actually um, press it, obviously. Let's lower this guy down a little bit because it's, so this one actually fits on my 15 by 15. Okay. So as I told you, this guy hits here before it hits here, which causes major pressure issues. So how did I combat that? You will ask. I took cardstock. That's right. Cardstock. Hold on one second. Let me grab my cardstock. All right. So I grabbed some cardstock, and what I did was essentially make a wedge. So I sat here, and it's not a huge gap that's between here and here, but it it is enough to cause pressure issues. So I took this, stick this under my press right along the edge. So now when I close this, this is the same pressure as this. And it's just putting a tiny piece of cardstock, you're creating a wedge, in order for this to sit correctly. JPP does make one that fits perfectly on your heat press, okay? So because it is exactly 15 inches, it doesn't go beyond 15 inches. So, I mean, you are stretching the limits of this 15 by 15 press. The wedge absolutely helps. And if you don't believe me, I wish Jen would get on. Jennifer, um, oh gosh, I could see her name. It's got three names. Uh, Spreeman, I think is her name. She, I showed her the video. She kept messing up these huge boards. And when I showed it to her, she has now pressed them perfectly every time. So this little cardstock wedge helps fix that pressure issue in a clamshell. So I hope that helped. Yeah. Lizzie, every now and then I have a smart idea. Every now and then. <laughs> Let me just put this all back. All right, let me bring me back up. Hi. <laughs> Every now and then I have a good idea. Every now and then. Hold on, we're just going to get this up. I hope that helped, Gwen, to be honest with you. Um, well, huh? No? Okay. Um, I hope that helped uh, for... Figuring it out. A lot of times that's what you have to do. Like I said, with the clamshell, Amy's totes are far easier when I realized what my problem was. And that was that there's a pressure issue on the front end of my press. Once I conquered that, I could do anything. It didn't matter. So 
stop fighting with it. Yes, you could probably use foam. I use cardstock just because it's a little bit um, sturdier. You don't want anything really thicker than cardstock under there because really it's just like two papers thick is actually the gap that ends up happening. It's really not that thick, but in the sublimation world, that can mean a huge difference, especially with stuff like cutting boards. So again, don't let somebody rain on your parade and tell you that you only need a swing away and that they're the top and blah, 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 blah. Wrong. Spend your money on your blanks so you can make money. I never plan on getting a swing away. I'm just telling you right now. I used one and I didn't like it. But that's because I am so adapted to my clamshells. That's just personal preference. If you have a swing away, have at it. You guys can do what you need to do and you're going to find your little corks that you have with yours. I'm never going to tell you that your heat press is wrong. I'm never going to heat press shame you because you have a clamshell because it's exactly what happened. So there you go. Thank you, Miss Judy. What items, um, what items need that just the hard substrates? I, yes. Now I don't do that for my slates. I actually press a couple slates. I posted it. I just post my slates. I do my slates right in that press, that small one. Um, I could do them in Big Daddy, but like I said, Big Daddy takes an absolutely astronomical amount of time to heat up. So I want sometimes it to be quicker. So I definitely utilize my 15 by 15 a lot more when it comes to my smaller stuff. Um, so, and I still use a clamshell and it comes out perfect. So that just shows you that not everybody knows everything. Room for swing ways of paint. Oh, I agree. Let's see. Never gave it a second thought. My clamshell is it okay. Can I? See, clamshell people unite. All right. <laughs> so there's that. People also ask me about business. Now let's be honest and be real. This is our real and honest moment right now for all of you. There are two groups of sublimation people out there. Crafters and people who want to make this a full-time business. I know that's not what you want to hear, but it's true. Okay. Crafters do this part-time. Crafters are, are just people who are looking to be able to pay for kids dance lessons. Okay. The person that wants to run this as a true blue business literally are hustling every single day. I'm not saying crafters don't hustle. Trust me, I've been a crafter since I was 12 years old, so I get it. But there are two definite differences between the two. Um, you will see, listen, you need to spend the money on quality blanks. As everybody knows, I am a quality snob. Um, I don't want something I have to try to coat, I have to try to fix. I will test things for you guys 110%. I will show you guys pictures later of the Ozark 30 ounce um, Yeti style tumblers that I got from Walmart and how the print quality was crap. Um, and how, yes, I did sublimate on it, but the quality was crap. I don't want to be selling somebody crap. If I want top dollar, then I've got to put top dollar into my product, okay? You put in what you get out, you know, that kind of saying. So keep that part in mind. I know for a fact that not everybody wants to go out and buy a hundred of whatever. I get that. But you know what? Find something that you want to start just hammering away at. That's how you do this in this business. I've been doing this now. It'll be four years Gosh, it'll be four years in June that I took an absolute leap of faith and said, I've got to do this and I've got to learn this. And no sooner do I take that leap of faith and my husband lost his job. So I was like, okay, sink or swim, you got to do this. And I did. And I put myself through it. Um, this past September, I had been dead set against about learning Corel and Photoshop and with a lot of encouraging from Stan and Marvin, more Marvin, because Marvin had took a lot of time to sit and say, listen, you have a design, you have a designer's eye, you know how to design. Now we need to just get you to get out there and sell it, which brings me to my next point. People often ask, what do you do? Website, blog, Etsy, is it easy? I have a website. My website I use for my fundraisers. Um, I don't use Etsy for that. Etsy is like a quick buck. I guess that's the way I can I can see Etsy. Why? Because it's really just easy to set up a store. That's how you can make uh, you know money to a lot of different people. Um, 
yes, you can on websites. I just feel like the traffic is so much more because of the way the platform Etsy had set it up. Now you're thinking dollars to cents. Is it worth it? 20 cents of my, my listing goes towards an Etsy fee. I mean, I'm paying $30 a month on a website that I hardly use. Apples to oranges here. You have to decide what you want. As for a blog, you guys listen to me enough on a Sunday. I don't think you need me blogging about it either. Um, could I? Sure. Could I blog about my business, tell you about different things? Sure. That's why I have a Facebook page. Um, I have two Facebook pages. I have my one for my physical stuff that I do, and I have one for my design stuff that I do. Um, I have a website, and I have Etsy, but i got to tell you, the main part of my business um, are my website and Etsy. Yes, my Facebook page does help guide people there, um, but that's how you know you have to sit and figure out do you want to be paying thirty dollars a month on a website you have to figure that out, especially a quality website you want a quality website um and i've been so busy that i haven't even been able to take time to update my own website um i really should probably find a person for that uh, <laughs> so you have that so you really have to just figure out what is best for you now if you're on the edge of being able to say do i jump with etsy or not just jump What's it going to hurt? You throw five postings up and see what happens? Okay, so you don't make something in the first day, first week. But by the first month, you should have put enough information out there for people to go buy your stuff. Make sure you tag your product correctly when you're doing your little tags in there. And think of short keywords. Example, if you're selling a cutting board, you put cutting board. Hold on one second. You put cutting board, you put whatever's on the design. Hold on one second. Come on, come on. Go. I apologize, it's Sunday and my dogs are allowed to roam in my shop on Sundays and my one puppy who is blind absolutely loves sitting right by my feet and cuddling with mama. So he thought it was time to cuddle and it wasn't. So I do apologize. Back to my thought. So for Etsy, um, just make sure you tag it correctly. You have a cutting board and you want to, whatever the design is, you want to put the tag. So it's floral, you just put floral, cutting board, um, you put kitchen, all those little tiny tags because as people are searching, those are what they're searching for. Okay, they're putting in small keywords to help find your product is essentially what it is. So there's that. Um, so that's what I would, that's what I would do. Yes, websites are extremely time consuming. There's just a different part of what you have to put on a website versus what you have to put in an Etsy shop. I don't want to say like Etsy's instant gratification, but it's more so than a website, I have to tell you. Um, and having both, like I said, I do use my websites for my fundraisers. That's where everybody goes. I put up their stores and that has worked very well for me. Um, so you just have to find out what works for you, essentially. I'm going to check some questions. <laughs> for skates so you use silicone sheet for skates Tanya what are you talking about <laughs> I, I don't make skates that's a new one um, see Leslie you're my people you are my people you're a quality snob just like I am um, alright are we good so far um, so now I'm going to, my dogs just want to be a pain today. Give me one second. My puppies are worse than my children. Oh, slates. I was like, skates? I've never done skates. My business Facebook page or my designs Facebook page? So if you just type in LPB designs, that's my physicals page where my clients order slates and cutting boards and all that. LPB designs and more is my designs page. Um, so, and one has the peach icon. LPB designs has the peach icon. And LPB designs has the teal. So there you go. Where do you recommend purchasing blanks from? Okay. 
So I preach it every Sunday, Brian. Your question was, is where to buy good quality blanks? I will tell you right now, Sublimation and More is run by Hellbound.com and ConeyIslandTransfer.com. I always start there. They're what I call shop small, shop local. There are local people, okay? So I start there. You can get stuff from Amy, like family boards, seatbelt covers, ornaments. You can get wood. She does all of our like laser type projects. Um, she And she has some neoprene, but she does more of the hard substrates. Flip it over to this side where you've got Coney Island Transfer and that's your soft lines, okay? And I love that he keeps with that and I keep encouraging that, although Jen doesn't like it when I encourage that. But he is my go-to for all things baby. Um, and he has amazing towels. So if you want towels and baby stuff, that is where you go is over there. So he's like our soft lines and Amy um, over at Hailbound is our hard substrates. Don't get them confused, by the way. Amy, Hailbound, Stan and Jen are Coney Island. So you got, and you'll hear about Eldon. Eldon is the shipping god over there. Um, that's Amy's husband. So there are two different companies who are our shop small people. Um, then beyond that, there are major vendors. Stick with major vendors, okay? Uh, you're going to shop around, and I'm all for shopping around. Shipping becomes the biggest question of them all. And I can't say this any nicer without sounding sassy. Suck it up, buttercup, okay? I understand shipping is astronomical, but that's the price of doing business, okay? I get it. You factor it into your your cost and your price and what you're going to charge somebody. So suck it up, buttercup. If you want something, order it. If I need a shirt from someplace like SNS Active Warriors, where I typically shop because it's in New Jersey and I can get it next day, um, one shirt will cost me $17 on top of whatever the shirt actually costs for shipping. So I make sure that I get my shipping up there because I actually would pay less per item. See how that works? You take your shipping costs, divide it by however many items you have, and that's how you factor in your shipping. Keep that thought in mind. I know that's really sassy and harsh, but that is the honest to God truth. Shipping is a fact of life and we can't get around it. Amazon broke us, absolutely broke us, but you're still paying a fee each year. I think it's up to $199 or some strange thing. It's some that you pay per year to be able to, he's fine, let him go. Every year you have to pay that membership fee for Amazon Prime. People forget to factor that in as well. Um, you're paying a fee. So, or if you need it quicker, you're paying an extra fee, $3.99, $7.99, whatever it is. But Amazon broke us when it came to that. So there you go. It, it, you have Hailbound and, and Coney Island Transfer. That's a dude. Hailbound has her shipping factored in. And Coney Island has an amazing new um, program where it's you buy a shipping credit. And people are often confused by shipping credits. Here's the deal with the shipping credits. Buy them. Just buy them. So a $20 shipping credit will cover, should cover the cost of your, whatever your item is shipping. If there is an overage, so let's say it only costs because Stan works with actual shipping, okay, actual shipping, and you bought a $20 shipping credit, all right, let's say it only costs you $11.57 to ship it. Jen goes in and reimburses you the difference between the $20 and the $11.57. Why? One, you're not waiting around for a shipping invoice, okay, because a lot of people forget that they have to go pay a shipping invoice after, which people think that's ludicrous, but I'm sorry, I want real-time shipping. I wanna know that I'm actually paying cost. I'm not making, he's not making any money off of it. His are so variable being soft lines because of weights and whatnot and what he can actually stuff in a box. Hard substrates, think about it. If you put a slate in a box, you can't bend it. You can't, they're, they're a little bit harder to manipulate. Whereas if you take a couple towels, roll those bad boys up, you can put them in a sealed wrap bag and whatever and stuff them in a box, you can get a lot more in a box than you can a hard substrate. So keep that thought in mind when you're ordering. So definitely 
If you want your package shipped, go for the shipping credits at Coney Island. That is where they're moving towards having us all do. I think that's a genius idea. Um, people are a little weary of it. Don't be. It's actually great business sense is the way I could do it for what he does. Okay, what Amy does, because hers is like a Jenga board. Um, and Eldon is the best Tetris master there is when it comes to putting hard substrates into a box and making it work. I cannot stress that enough, Eldon's packing. And then Jen has to look at stuff and go, how many towels can I fit in that box and jam it in there so you pay the least amount of money? There you go. That's the answer. So it's apples to oranges. Keep that thought in mind. <sighs> okay. Are we good? So far? Tell them. Preach it! It's Sunday. <laughs> um, when we started ordering the other week, accommodate should um, set expectations. What is she right? And as you get busier, right. Shipping credits, because listen, I don't have time for waiting an email from Jen to say, hey, listen, you have a shipping credit, or you have a shipping invoice, da 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 No, I just wanted to ship out. So buy the shipping credit. She has to do the work anyway, God bless her, and, and give you the refund. And literally, as soon as she's printing out your printing label, and she knows how, how much it weighs, because they weigh every single box. And if you don't believe me, I should just videotape it sometime. Because I can tell you from Skyping with them all the time, they weigh every single box. So if you order something and I order something, it, it could be different depending on where you live, the region, the whole nine yards. Keep that in mind as well. Jen, as soon as she's printing out that shipping label, she's in giving you a, a refund if you get one. And even if it's 90 cents, she is refunding your money. Okay, that's how important it is to them. So really, 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 really do shipping credits with them. I know, you know, it just gets factored into what you're paying anyway. Just know that if it's anything less than the 20, 40, whatever you picked, they are refunding your money immediately as soon as that printing, that shipping label is printed. So there you go. Hope that helped. You're welcome, Jennifer. Jen works very hard. She is behind the scenes and she works tirelessly and effortlessly and, and, and she does it with just amazing flaw or not flaw. She's flawless. I should really just tell you that because she's got to put up with Stan. <laughs> All right. Look what's going on the website. So I'm going to start doing these. I got to finish uh, creating my template for these. I totally talked about these. These are going on Connie Island's um, website. If he already hasn't had it on there, he promised me they'd be on today. So now I'm holding them to it. <laughs> so these are the grill master type um, oven mitts that he has because let's be honest I don't want to get my really soft wonderful linen ones from Amy all gooked up from the grill but let me tell you about these bad boys okay this guy right here I love the fact that it has that neoprene rubber type thing here especially when you're dealing with the grill um, this is also great for fire pits if you're a camper so this takes an absolute beating I love the fact that it's flat um, that you can just add a little bit more pressure because I only had one of these, and that was one thing I would say, these seams. Um, you really have to make sure you press the living heck out of this thing. So this is great for grilling. This is great for working campfires because of how it's made and constructed. It does take, you know, the heat, you know, you're not going to burn your hands. Um, so these will be, if he hasn't already, listed them today. So you guys can start buying these, and I've started designing these, and they're also going to have a design to match Amy's linen aprons for Father's Day. So you'll get the set. You'll get this. It only comes in right-handed, by the way. Um, so you get the design for this with the matching apron and a matching towel design so that you can make a total Father's Day set. Um, so that's this. God bless you, Kevin. Um, before everybody else says God bless you. <laughs> so there is going to be this. He also, are you ready? QVC moment. Okay. So he also has listed his shirts. He's got the ladies V neck. I think the, um, crew neck is up there now. The, so he's got the toddler raglan. He's got the toddler regular. He's got the 
scoop neck and the v-neck he's got them all the way up to 2xl he also has the men's unisex type raglan that's now added to the website so he's starting to carry shirts remember he's our soft lines guy so his stuff he's already got those on the site and some are in limited quantity okay like the 2xl v-necks are limited quantity right now keep that in mind they are a thicker shirt I can't wait to get mine because I'm going to sub on mine so you guys can see the difference between ordering a Gildan or Jersey's 100% um, poly white because they're see-through versus his, which are like his body suits, the baby body suits. They're a thicker material. So, you know, us ladies, we don't have to worry about see-through stuff. Okay, so... I can't wait to get them um, and also try it on for fit because I am a, a bigger size girl. So I can't wait to do that. I love the fact that he now has V-neck. That's kind of just a win for me. So because it has a more feminine touch. And there you go. So hurry up. Go get your shirts. Get those in there. I like the fact that he's starting to carry shirts because it's more of a one-stop shop. I can get my towels. I can get my baby stuff. And there you go. I just said that really, really fast. Crew neck, V-neck, adult and toddler raglans, and men's crew. There you go. All added as per Jennifer. Whoop, whoop. He has not posted these yet. <gasps> he lied. He will. He, he's, he'll get it up there today. Um, so these are, the, he does have these in stock, so they're coming. So let's move over to some food for thought with Amy. I have to thank Miriam for this. All right. So... If anybody knows, Miriam makes her Miriam Brooks makes her own jewelry, but she incorporates using the snap jewelry with that Amy sells with stuff that she sells. And let me tell you, that woman is on point. She makes some of the most absolutely gorgeous things when it comes to jewelry and how she thinks outside the box of using something that Amy has and takes it to the next level. Well, Miriam, I see your bracelet and I raise you a beautiful necklace. So you guys are all asking me what I did. You can go and buy wherever it is. You buy a plain, simple necklace and you can add one of Amy's charms because this charm actually opens up. It's a clasp. And all it does is you just gently pry it open and you can set it on any, any necklace. I mean, look at that. And now I have my own snap jewelry. Right? I've been waiting to show her this. You have no idea. I mean, how gorgeous is that? I love it. I love that I can change it out. And so take your ordinary beaded necklaces that you have in your drawer. All right. And just up your game a little bit. Buy Amy's charms. She has these individual charms. You're going to ask me where they are. If you go into her, what look like the Alex and Ani style bracelets, in the drop down menu there are the charms. Okay, so you can add extra charms to that bracelet. Well, buy the extra, just buy the charms. Okay, but isn't that gorgeous? See? Now Miriam is going to go and create the world. I cannot wait to see what she does. But here you go. There's my think outside the box moment. It's absolutely stunning. Um, you can put it on anything, really. So add that. So take Amy's snap jewelry and go beyond what it's meant for and put it on so many other things. It's absolutely adorable. Yay! See, I can hear, I can hear Miriam's wheels going like this right now. You have no idea. I absolutely adore her. All right. We are going to... Press and press and we're going to move on to this for Amy. Amy has some amazing products. Um, she has been all over with Vegas and whatnot. Um, so her and I have not touched base a lot. Um, so this is the seatbelt cover that we're going to press. And I'm going to explain some things to you from a first responder's point of view. Um, the, as soon as I find my lint roller. Where the heavens did I put it? Oh, goodness gracious. I hate when you have something and you know you had it. Oh, there it is. All right. So, your lint roll. Let's get this party started down right here. All right. There we go. Good morning, Stan. 
Stan, you just totally missed what I said. Anyway, so... Stan, you're going to have to go watch the rewind on the shipping credits and how you're supposed to use them properly with Coney Island Transfer. All right, so I am sitting here lint rolling, lint rolling, lint rolling. Because, believe it or not, and I can still see them, there's little fibers, okay? Any of those dust fibers or any of the lint fibers, get on these, okay? Amy's little pro tip. Hold on. There you go. Hold it over so it doesn't keep popping up on me. Go in both directions because you never know. All right. So you've lit rolled this to death. All right. So let's let's decide how this is going to sit. So I'm going to show you something. This is the back side. So that line is your back side. Okay. This is what you want on your front. Okay. This. So I want it like this. All right. As you can see, there's a rounded edge. Right, but when you're making your design, believe it or not, you're only really using this little small space because that's the back. You're not going to print on the back, okay? If you're doing something like a medical alert type of thing, you're printing on the back, okay? There's no point in that. So what I do is we're going to cut this out. Now... Because I am horrible in the lining up program when it comes to this stuff sometimes. I'm literally going to cut on the edge just because I'm, you know what, I'm not on my A game today when it comes to my lining up just because I am tired. This is just normal for our business. Okay. You totally could do your, your print. Remember, this is the back side. So your rounded edge. So I want to make sure that this is all the way around you can I've totally cut this out and laid it in but you know i'm going to do this because again not on my a game today so not on my a game i apologize apologize it was a long night okay so then we're going to tape this down you could use your pro spray um which you know what i'm going to use pro spray today i don't use pro spray by the way i use this this is my pro spray. Okay, there you go. In a nutshell, this is what it is. I do it over a garbage can, just like everybody else. A little, a little dabble, do ya? Okay. I get this all lined up. I do just over the edge. Now remember, my image is right here because when this folds around, this is the back side. Okay. Who has those shirts? Coney Island Transfer has those. Please show us how to press the cup handles. There's a total sass for that. I, I did that. Um, thanks for the tip on the spray. Welcome. I got that at Walmart. It's in the craft section. Um, give me two seconds. I'm going to put this on the press. Get my... And we're going to talk about the other part of it while I get this part pressed. Um, you can definitely, obviously, do a quick pre-press. I did not on this. Um, you obviously do one, but I didn't. All right, enough pressure. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make the pocket for the back. All right, so what I'm going to do is you take one of Stan's lens cloths, all right, and you cut it so that you make a square. Or, well, it's a rectangle, but it's got to be bigger than a, like a, a, a business card, okay? So what you want to do is put this up near the edge. You're going to take your tape, your heat bond tape, you're going to put one here, one here, and one along the edge, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to get my little tiny iron plugged in so that you can slide a business card size piece of paper in there. So that's where you hide the medical data on the inside of these pockets, okay? So let's get us all plugged in. This is my, for this project, I definitely want to use this, my little handy dandy iron. Um... 
The reason for that is because I need a little more control. Give me one second. Ah, slight shift, but that's okay. For this tutorial, that is fine. Okay, that's because I was fixing my pressure and I didn't fix my pressure ahead of time. So there's a slight shift. Um, show you pro tip. Because I'm using black. I don't care right now. You can if it's small. Like this is too big of an area. But if you've got like this white seam. Get a fabric marker. Alright. And you can totally hide with a fabric marker. I'm just using a Sharpie right now. That. I'm not worried about this. Like I said, this is for a test. Um, but that's how you can hide the seam when it's going around okay all right so when you're folding this this is that inner pocket right I make mistakes all the time okay so keep that in mind I am so not a pro and I never claim to be okay so in here is where you want to put your your data right so you just want to fold it to see where where this is going okay so while that, this warms up, so this is my mini iron that I'm going to use, okay? You take one of Stan's lens cloths, and where it's going to sit, actually, is right in here. So what you're going to do is essentially you're creating a pocket, okay? That's how you make your pocket. I'm subbing onto this. I'm going to do that real quick so that when people open it up, because... My design says medical data inside. So when they open it up, it says it. And people are often asked, why do they use this? If you've got a child who has some sort of medical condition where they can't talk and mom and dad are incapacitated from a first responder st standpoint, if there's something like the child has autism, um, has Asperger's, uh, there's an infant even, this, and if they have some medical issue, this little bit of information can help a first responder, help your child, help your elderly loved one, anyone. It doesn't matter. So for instance, my husband has one and in his, it tells him that he has had a heart attack and that he's a type two diabetic. Um, it'll even say some of his medications that he's on because what if my husband gets into a car accident and I'm not with him? This can kind of help save his life if people know what's going on. So that's why these seatbelt covers are hugely important. Um, let's see. I always remember to pre-press it. <laughs> I know. It's right, Sam? When I do my lives, it's totally different than when I actually do stuff. Um, I have toddler ones in my cart. I didn't see kids. Um, the kids ones, you, you have to look at the size. So their kids ones are the youth six youth he has it as a six y um the the two y is actually a two t that's what that size is it's just how it comes from the manufacturer um so if you're looking at sizing in stands and him and i've gone round and round about this um so your your two y is like your two t your four y is a four t um or a four youth it's hard. I'm going to put it up against mine and I'll give you a hundred percent sure on that one, but I'm pretty sure it probably goes with a four T his six Y goes with the size six shirt. So, and I match those up. I can tell you right now his six Y is a definitely kid's shirt. Um, it's not a toddler. Youth is coming within the hour there. The, the messages of God's okay. Um, Yes. So these, these are definitely, um, these are from Amy. I encourage these a lot. Um, I'm going to give this a quick press. Um, and just for our sake of a tutorial, um, it's like I said, you're going to take one of stands. These are very inexpensive. You can get a couple out of one of his, um, uh, lens cloths. They sub so you can sub on them. You're going to put them in here so that when you roll everything up, this is great too to give to like if they're doing seatbelt check or seatbelt um, 
car seat. That's what it is. If you know a uh, local law enforcement that does car seat stuff, this is something to actually shop around to them or give away or whatever you want to do. But this is huge uh, for those who have medical issues. Uh, and I know they look, oh, well, no, no, believe it or not, as from a, as a first responder myself, um, it speaks volumes. Uh, and it helps because we are not mind readers and we don't have a magic eight ball. So get the lens cloths from Stan, get the seatbelt covers uh, from Amy. And I have these designs on my Etsy page already mapped out. So it's already there for you. All right, so we're going to put that on there. And you definitely don't want to sew these. All right, so we're going to put the little tape. This heap on tape is amazing, by the way. Okay, literally, oops. This is how easy this heap on tape is. And if you notice, I'm not being too... And you got it. Listen, before you put this bottom piece off, you got to peel the tape off the pair the paper backing. OK, you want to reveal the backing because when you go to put this back on, you're going to totally put the tapers paper. Not that I've never done that before, said no one ever. OK. Again, that's how you make a pocket. It's how you can make a pocket for anything, really. Stan's lens cloths just sub beautifully to begin with. Um, so, again, y'all following along with the bouncing ball? He's in there talking about shirts, and I'm in here talking about this. Stanley, you're killing me. Um, he's answering all the shirt questions, so I don't have to. <laughs> he's late to the party. He doesn't realize we already talked about that. Silly man. Tricks are for kids. See how, I mean, this iron is a beast. For a little tiny iron, he is a beast. All right, so. If in theory, I did this correctly. <laughs> right, put it down. Now, literally... You can throw this back in your heat press really quickly. Um, give it a quick press, which I'm going to do for that, just because I'm anal. Give it a quick love, not even a couple seconds. Okay. Get it so it's nice all in here. You got to let it cool, too, before you start playing with it, by the way. Don't try to start putting shoving cards in this until this sets up. I mean, this isn't, you, you got to give it, you got to let that glue cool, because that's what keeps the adhesive down. So you go get the thinnest heat bond. Um, this measures, if you're going to ask me, I know you are. I just really measured it based on a business card. So you're looking at three inches wide by approximately four inches. So three by four um, for this. It's all sealed. Now you've got that medical data. Watch. And you can trim it. There you go. Medical data inside. This goes around the seat cover, and there you go. What do we think? Is this a good thing, bad thing? Are there different size seat belt covers? Um, no, there is a one size. There is ones for luggage, but they're not made for seat belts. This, this is a one size fits all um, kind of thing. So what is, what is that iron? This iron is in the craft section of any... This is my lens cloth because there's glue on it. Um, thing. This is, oh goodness. It's a Dritz, D-R-I-T-Z. I got this at Walmart. It's in their craft section. I know Michael's has it. Um, I think Joanne's might even have it. It's a little tiny iron. It's totally badass, um, to be honest. So there you go. There is that. 
Um, so there you go. I mean, so if your child has, the child has autism anywhere on the spectrum, maybe they have epilepsy, you don't know, maybe they're allergic to bees. You want to put whatever you think, you know, so that's why medical data, I, you can make them look fun for kids. As long as the first responder sees this signal right here. Okay. That's alerting them that there is a medical issue with the person on that seatbelt. Now, I also encourage you when you're putting, this is why I don't put names here. Okay. Because people who walk by, um, who walk by your car are going to see your name. Okay. And your child's name. So we're in a day and age. I'm going to move this real quick. We are in a day and age of creepers. Okay. Let's be honest. So you can have this design without giving away what your child's name is, whatever. Okay. And that's just from a passerby. Let's keep it safe, people. With that said, you put everything in here. I do encourage though, because I know with my kids, my kids sit in different seats. So maybe my son might have a medical issue, but he's sitting in his sister's seat that he normally, you know, that he normally doesn't sit in. And that's where this is attached. Granted, I have teenagers, but my suggestion is put in there, 16 year old male you don't even have to put um their name 16 year old male 20 year old female whatever the case may be roughly so that it gives the first responder an idea that this is the right person sitting in there you can put them their name in there what if you have two little girls right maybe they don't know the age of the two little girls maybe you have twins you know marvin's expecting twins so you know they have to you have to find some sort of way to differentiate the card inside and that's what you encourage the parents to do the parents actually fill out the card you don't but you provide the card for them um you could print that off on cardstock and put it in there medical information where you can put their name their age female male you can help them by just filling it out um if anybody who has a child that went to school you have those dreaded blue cards where you have to fill out all their medical information you got to send in for the first day same similar idea so there you go. You can do front and back. The elderly one is great too, because my thought was as a first responder, I can tell you a story. There was a child who, um, there was a family who was in a car accident and the child actually had autism and couldn't speak. The parents were incapacitated because of the car accident and we could not get this child to talk to us and we couldn't figure out why. We didn't know if it was just necessarily trauma but, or they couldn't. This would have been ideal because it would have let us know our plan of attack as a first responder. Okay, this one's on the spectrum. We're might it's nonverbal, and you can even put nonverbal right here. Nonverbal autism, um, that kind of thing. This way, they know. You know, if God forbid something happens to your family while they're in the car, I can't stress that enough. Being you know a first responder myself, so. There you go. I hope that helps. I know that a lot of people have asked about that. So I'm going to move the camera back. Yeah, seatbelt covers. Um, and like I said, use one of Stan's lens cloths. Um, you can actually get two. Just cut it down this way. You can leave it long if you want to. If you like that edge to it, that's fine too. You just want to have the medical data. So you can get two out of these really inexpensive lens cloths from Stan. You want the inexpensive ones, by the way, don't use the fancy ones. All right. They're too thick. You want something thin and these work absolutely perfect. So there you go. That is a, for us law enforcement, absolutely. Law enforcement, let me tell you, I gave these to um, a bunch of police officers. They were giving away, they were doing the, the car seat checks. And they gave these out. And let me tell you, huge, huge hit. So there you go. All right. My next project for y'all is we're going to talk about this family board. All right. So family boards are not hard. Um, a lot of people um, think that they're hard. This is one of the original ones because I think Amy's redesigned it just a little bit. But this is the one. And I want to talk to you about this guy. Shall we? We shall talk about this guy. Hold on one second. We have people who decide that messaging me on a Sunday is a fabulous idea. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about. This is one of her family boards. Yes, you can fit 12 utensils on here. What I'm going to tell you is, is I'm on the hunt and I will link it 
once again, I have the bigger S hooks and I'm going to want to clamp it so that these S hooks don't come off, but we can fit larger S hooks so that they fit the larger items. So I don't have to like turn them around like I had to with this one. Um, but then they fit the larger handles, but then you can decorate this to fit the theme of your kitchen. Um, so this is my think outside the box. Move this back just a touch because I'm a little, I'm a little close. Um, so this is a great thing outside the box. You can use this to hang utensils on it. And then this way you're not buying another substrate. If you've got those family boards, this would be something great as another alternative idea. I do plan on making my own mock-up for it so that you guys can actually um, go ahead and sell it. This is what I'm using. Like I said, I want to change my hooks though. That's the only thing I'm going to change on that is the hooks. These are, I want to say a one inch hook and I want a little bit bigger. Uh, so that's where I'm going with this one. I think this is a great idea. I've been stewing on this forever. Uh, the design that I have printed out is from Ashley Dodd from Aparicium. Now that it's printed. So my, my kitchen is farmhouse country. All right. So it's backwards, obviously. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using. I'm using one of her family boards to make my, for my house, because that's what my kitchen's done in. It's done in the redrawn type theme. So I wanted farmhouse kitchen. Now we also have gotten asked, where do I draw information or my inspiration, I should say, for designing? I literally read lots of fashion magazines, lots of home decor magazines, see what's in, what's now, what's upcoming. That's where I spend a lot of my time studying. I still study in this business. If you're not studying, if you're not learning, then you're not meant to do this. You should be learning something new every single day. That helps your brain power. It helps your creativity. Yes, we all get into funks, but you really should be learning something new every day. Um, I do want to uh, let you know that a huge proud moment for myself and a huge proud moment for Ashley Dodd is both Ashley and myself were picked as featured designers on the Sublimation Today uh, website that was launched by Robin, one of our members. So both her and I were both featured designers on that, and that's a, that's a huge compliment for the two of us. I have to say that I am very humbled that I was one of the ones that was picked, um, and I am more than blessed that I get to share that limelight with Miss Ashley because the two of us work our tail feather off to provide everything we can for you guys. Um, so I, I'm super proud of that. Uh, the two of us came from Sub and More. I mean, that just tells you the quality of designers, quality of people that come out of Sub and More because Robin thinks enough of us to be able to, to put us out there worldwide. Um, so I wanted to take that moment. I am very humbled and I just wanted to say thank you for Robin to, uh, to put Sub and More out there and pick two of us designers. So thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, and I have the form to tell you. <laughs> so there's that. We're also going to talk about, let's just change gears just a little, is your clipboards. You want to hang your clipboards. I mean, that's why there's this. I've done a tutorial on how to fasten those clipboards. You definitely want this style versus the big clamp because they're a pain in the butt to do. This one, you literally lay flat and you just hammer. You put the male and female end together and here, and you literally just hammer it with a ball hammer just because the ball hammer can get inside there or a very small hammer. Um, but I'll show you the hammer. I don't know where actually where my hammer is, but I have a ball hammer that I use for this. Here's why you can hang these. So they have smaller clipboards that are great for kitchens, but this is, maybe you've got a recipe that you want to work on. Maybe you want to make this into a sign. Um, maybe you want to put your grocery list on it. Whatever the case may be, this isn't just for the classroom. This isn't just for the office. You can put a lot of things on here. It's also a great showpiece, to be honest with you. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you theme this out with your utensils board, it's going to look like a piece of artwork more than anything. And that's cool. But this allows you to also use it in the kitchen because it has this coating on it. You can wipe it off and then it's double sided. Um, see? So it's not like you can't wipe it off if, God forbid, you get schmutz on it from using it on a recipe. Um, so these are just for offices. And, and people, you know, think of everything else that you can use them for. Yes, you can 
you know, have your think outside the box moments, but that's, that's one for, it's one for the ages. All right. You also, people want to do a lot of poly canvas. Another question in there was how to make those really cool. You want to get away from vinyl, those canvas, you want to do canvas. That's your thing, but maybe you don't want to buy the canvas pieces that you have to put it on. You can get on, let Google be your guide and you can get inexpensive frames. Now one, you can either staple it to the back, all right, paint your frame out, or you can wrap it around and create your own. I personally like to staple it to the back and it gives it a picture frame look. I like the picture frame look when I'm doing my vinyl, or not doing my vinyl, doing my sublimation. So I get my poly fabric, because you don't need to have poly canvas, you can get thick poly fabric. When I go to Joann's later, I will tell you what it is, where it is and where I buy it by the yard. You can get on, even on, again, let Google be your guide, poly fabric, and you can totally completely sub a beautiful image on the back of this. You know, attach it, staple it on, use your rotary cutter. There you go. So just start Googling frames. You don't need the whole picture, right? And that can make for some absolutely beautiful artwork. Next. Let me tell you, this poor camera is going to work out today. We are talking about, some people wanted to ask me how I screen printed on my um, umbrella. I use screen print transfers, okay? So here's something that I'm working on, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test it out and see if it works um, myself. Is So when you open up your umbrella, all right, you can sub on this, but there's a small area that you can sub on. Yes, you can do screen print transfers. So maybe you're ordering screen print screen print transfers for a local baseball team order a couple extra so that you can put it on stuff like umbrellas now that also allows you if you do the screen print transfers to put it on any color umbrella okay whereas if you're going to sub it it needs to be white light light pink light blue light purple light green the very light pastel colors in order to sub on it please keep in mind if you're subbing on a color as in pink blue it will change the color of your design i repeat this also goes for t-shirts if you go and sub on a pink like this pink or a any color shirt other than white even gray um, will change the color of your image. It changes how it appears because it takes the color from the shirt and adds it into the design. Okay, that's why they tell you sub on white. So if you're gonna get these umbrellas and you're gonna do sub, then you want the white to do it. If you're gonna do screen print transfers, you put it on the same way you would a regular transfer. You heat press it on for 10 seconds and it's done. You can add the team's logo that you're already working on onto the heat onto the screen print transfer onto the um, umbrella now what I'm working on so because I can't leave well enough alone I went in and I took this apart so these little things pop off there's two places it's sewn I can put a quick whip stitch back in so that maybe I can sub a bigger area so that I can bring my design up higher onto my umbrella instead of having it in just this little section so that's what i'm working on these just popped right off um like i said i'm going to if you notice i'll try to pull it so you can see i left the strings in you just add a couple threads i mean really use your thicker thread that they make like uh kids bracelets out of it's a it's a thicker thicker thread not your regular sewing thread um they use it for hand embroidery um, but that's where my next project is, is to see how far I can get my sublimation up on these. Um, and then I can teach you guys a little bit more on how I did that, but that's where my head's at. Um, and that was taking an umbrella apart to do it. So there is that. I'm going to look and see. Oh, thank you, Elaine. Thanks guys. You know what? I have to tell you, being a stay-at-home mom and a two-time bone cancer survivor, it kind of can mess with your head. I've been a stay-at-home mom now for 20 years, um, and we don't get the accolades that businesses get. So when we do get a little bit of, hey, at a girl, um, 
it means the world. So I'm, I'm very humbled. So if you get the chance, please, by all means, go read the article that she put out there. She, um, on mine, she featured Amy's family um, tree, for those who haven't seen it. Um, this is the family tree that I had made. Um, Amy makes the tree. She gives you a sub, she gives you a template, which is completely black. And I went in having a total thought in my head how I could make this absolutely colorful and beautiful. Um, and my trick to pressing mine, because the circle does not line up 100%, you never line it up with the circle. When you do press this design, I can't stress this enough, line up the roots of the tree and your leaves. Ignore your circle, it will press perfectly. So line up the leaves and line up the roots. Don't line up your circle because the circle's a little bit wonky in my template. So it's just how it came out. I don't know why, it's just how it is. So line it up with the leaves and line it up with the roots when you're lining it up on your paper, okay? Also, if you're printing a two-sided design, your first side is completely mirrored, okay? Completely mirrored. When you go to flip it over to do the back side, don't mirror this part. You only are mirroring the name. So when you go to actually print it, okay, you actually have to change it in your design program. You can't change it in the print settings because that won't work, okay? So don't mirror this part. Mirror just the name. So you're going to have to flip your name when you... So uncheck mirror. Um, for those who use VPN, you uncheck the mirror button when you're printing the back side. But when you go to do your image in like Corel or Photoshop, just flip that first. Okay, make that a mirror image before you print it. So one side is completely mirrored. One side is half mirrored and half not. And remember, line it up with the roots and line it up with the trees. Don't line it up with a circle. All right. So this is one that uh, Robin had picked. And I absolutely love it. It's stunning. Amy did an amazing job on this tree of life. Uh, these are great for Mother's Day, they're great for anniversaries, they're great for bridal showers, uh, they're great for 50th wedding anniversaries. I'm working on one right now for my grandparents and I'm literally putting the names of all of our family members in the tree or in the leaves and um, putting their last name here and I've put their date that they got married on the tree. So this is going to my grand, one's going to my grandparents with all the kids' names. We're all a leaf in their world. So that's going to my grandparents. Um, they will be married 67 years this year. So I'm very blessed to still have those wonderful people in my world. So that's what's going to them. So this is not just a home thing. You can give it as a great gift idea and market it as such. So there you go. Who is Robin? Um... My screen print transfers I get from HowardCT.com. Uh, you can also get them from 1613. You can get them, I think it's Transfer Express. There's a couple different places. I prefer Howard just because of the fact of, you know, that's where I go to. I've also got, I get them from 613. Um, they have, I think it's a 15 cent program too. So you can do those. That's great if you're going to do large projects. And that's another thought I was going to have. A lot of people want to use the sublet decal for large projects. Farm that out. Anything over 20, farm it out. Um, especially in this business, don't kill yourself when it comes to that kind of stuff. I do a lot of screen tra print transfers. I have a whole box of ones that I keep for schools. And if you're wondering what they look like, I can show you. So because I deal with a lot of softball and baseball teams, I keep their logo on hand. They never go bad. So this is what it looks like. You literally lay it down, 350 for 10 seconds, peel it off, and you're done. There is no layering in this bad boy. So that's a nice um, idea for that. Um, we have Todd and we have Marvin who do the heat uh, transfer vinyl. They also do the sticker vinyl. So if you've got large runs, they're your go-to guys for that. They're our in-house guys. So kind of run to them uh, for that kind of stuff. Um, I'm doing one that just says, welcome. Who's Amy? Amy is the owner of our group. Her, she's Amy Hale from Halebound.com. She is, she's the owner of Halebound.com. You'll hear me talk about Amy and about Stan. So Amy is Halebound and Stan is Coney Island Transfer. So they're the two, our shop locals here. Look them up. That's where we get a lot of our substrates that we're able to do. And they have the lowest cost in substrates. Um, 
keep that in mind. They do their due diligence when it comes to their pricing. And if you're arguing with me on pricing, I want you to find me a better product. So. Um, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I do agree with that, Elizabeth. And let's see. I did the Tree of Life. Brenda writes, I did the Tree of Life and followed Nikki's instructions and it turned out perfectly. Brenda was awesome because I had to type it all out to her. I'm like, don't. Um, you Make sure you line it up with this so that I don't watch you messing these up. This is one of those things, this particular type of substrate or one of those things you don't want to be doing a million of them um, because they are, you know, they're expensive, but they're just tricky. So, you know, if I can give you a tip or trick, especially because I'm the one that made that design, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to try to do my best of my due diligence to help you. So. Um, Stan, if you're watching, is Stan still watching? Stan, are you still watching? No. Oh, he needs to get those on that website. So, so far, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? How are we doing? What time is that? 11.20. Oh, it's only 11.20. Oh, he is still listening. Can you tell him to please list that, um... I'll admit, please, because I talked about it, and he promised. <laughs> All right, so I did talk. I did. Somebody asked me about this. I um about subbing on this. So uh, it's a twofold process for me. I do this in my uh, convection oven, and I wrap it. Um, and then I do the mug itself in my mug press. Um, if you have a convection oven, you could do it all at the same time. I don't. So that's how I do that. I know a lot of people are using new products out there. I have no use in another throwaway product that I really can just do myself. So there you go. Thank you, love. Um, sublimation today, Laura or Lisa. And I'm super proud that two of us got picked from seven more. Um, we literally put our hearts into it. All of us do this entire team. Um, you have to understand one thing, you know, if we don't get on something right away, we're also running our own businesses too, you know, besides running, you know, helping run a web or a group page. And it's not just one group page and people forget to realize that, especially, you know, for an example, when people wanted me to hurry up and make a design, and they wanted it yesterday. The problem is, is I'm also doing physical work here and I'm running my own business here. So things take a little bit longer than me saying, oh yeah, I can do it right now. I can't do it right now. My name is not Amazon. Um, so keep that in mind because Sub and More is a huge group. Okay. We are the largest group out there and we not only have our sub and more business page where you're seeing me live from, but we also have our sub and more group, the learn, create, inspire. We also have our sub and more graphics and transfers group where you can buy the graphics and transfers that Ashley and I make and Margo. I'm going to give a huge shout out to Margo because Margo is killing it. Um, and whatnot. I love Margo to death. She is a mama of a lot of little ones and she works it she is absolutely my hero so and she's our kind of our sports our sportsy gal she deals with all things sports so if you're looking for that kind of stuff that is really Margot's thing all things farmhouse country is more ashley and i'm kind of just all over the board and i do baby products pretty much and first responder type stuff so that's kind of my thing um we also intermingle our ideas so it's not like we're hard set to do that so keep that in mind um so there's that so there's Oh yeah, and don't forget family. I have a family? Who the funk? <laughs> I do. I'm a mom with two kids. So keep that all in mind when you're asking us for something because we are a huge team. Um, and Amy literally takes her time. Her and Stan take their time when they're adding in people that we try really hard to help you as best we possibly can. So thank you very much for all of your kind words. I do appreciate that um, more than you will ever know. So... Yes, and Jen's posting our different groups right now. She's posting our different groups. She's posting the different links to the groups and the links to Hellbound and Coney Island Transfer. Like I said, we are an amazing group of people. We don't always get it right, but we definitely work our tail feathers off to try. 
Um, as a reminder, too, please, no in search of posts in the main group. Um, that will get you put in a, a memo, hey, no in search of. Um, also, can we kind of be kind to people? Listen, you're going to post a, an image that you made. Now, I can tell you right now, I'll, I'll post this. And I can prove to you that I'm going to probably get the love or hate, depending on the, the day. Oh, you messed this up. You're quick to critique somebody else's work. I suggest you stop. Find your filter. Don't critique them in a way that's harmful. Critique them in a way of helping them figure it out. All right, telling them that they messed up. Well, thank you, genius. We know you've messed up. We caught that memo. Okay, but how do we fix it? That's what people are looking for when they're sometimes posting stuff that they've made and go, you know what, I made a mistake because we're all learning, okay? We need to inspire each other. We need to be there for each other. Remember, we're a university. We're all here learning. Not one of us is a pro in any way, shape, or form. Just some of us are freshmen and some of us are seniors, okay? I don't know where I am. I, I can't even tell you. Um, Keep that in mind when you're doing that, okay? I can't express that enough. So if you see somebody you post something, encourage them, all right? Don't attack them. If you don't have a kind word to come out of your mouth, please don't use your fingers to type it. I don't, you know, I can't stress that enough um, in, in that. And I've seen that lately. You guys have been kind of attacking. Don't attack, don't attack, okay? No in search of posts. Do not post the links to other groups. Um, because this is our group. This is our university. Okay. Amy and Stan work really hard for this university. So um, keep that in mind. All right. There's my other preach moment of the day. There you go. <laughs> I've noticed a lot of searching for phone groups. Yes. We don't use that word. Listen, the, the phone grip thing. Don't. It's a fad. Let it go away. Just let it go away. The company that does own the copyright and trademarks to it is attacking, or I can't even attacking, they're, they're going after people for it. So let's just stay away from it. Stay away from it. You've got other things you can worry about. They make other types of style phone grips that you can buy that are made for sublimation, that were, that are pretty. You can really make them really nice. Go with that, you know. You've got other things that you can buy than to worry about whether or not you're going to get a cease and desist order. Right. You ain't got, I think, you got nothing good to say. I think Thumper said that one thing. You don't got nothing good to say. Don't say it at all. Yes. Oh, Catherine, I bet you have. <laughs> so, there you go. I'm a senior, I'm a senior freshman. <laughs> Sorry, I love that one. I'm a senior freshman. I'm in the specials class. Because I don't even know what I'm in. I'm not a freshman. and Maybe I'm a sophomore. I don't know. Maybe I'm a sophomore. I'm definitely not where Amy's at. She's at senior level. Not in age. Don't take it the wrong way. But she definitely knows a lot more from me. And a lot of things that you see me teach, it's just stuff I've learned from her. If you go onto our YouTube page, you will see Amy and Stan did a lot of teaching back in the day. I'm just repeating what they've said. Um, and I have the platform to do it. So a lot of things that I do are things that they've already done. I just go about it a little bit differently than they do. <laughs> Thank you. You like my sassy hat? It's very fitting, at least for today. All right. Any questions? Do you guys have any questions, comments, concerns? Whatever you want me to talk about, we are low on the totem pole today. Give me some love. Give me some shouts out. Um... That would be great. Go visit those links that Jen had talked about. I am putting up a poll. <laughs> I'm putting up a poll because guess what? Next Sunday is Mother's Day. And I need to know if I'm going live next Sunday. It might be just a short live. Um, I need to know if I'm going live for Mother's Day next week. And then I'll figure out maybe I'll take the time to change the time. And maybe we'll do it later on Sunday. Um, just so I can be taken out to breakfast by my husband and children. So I'm thinking I don't want to miss a sass um, because this is, I love, absolutely love what I do. So I'm thinking just changing the time next Sunday. I'm going to put a poll up. Let me know what you think though in the comments. That would be great. 
Oh, there we go. Amy and Stan are the principal and the vice principal. That's it. That's it. Yes. Yes, that's what they are. Good call. Good call. Does that make us, the rest of us, the counselors, maybe? Maybe we're, see, we're not even in a class. That's the thing. We're not in a class. We're just their support staff. I'm the secretary. That's what I am. Did you talk about the mug handles early on? I joined late. No, I didn't talk about mug handles. Um, the mug handles is actually just, I did back in December. I believe I did. I showed you how to do that. Um, and that's in a totally different SAS on those. I use a convection oven and I use my mug press to do that. If that's something you want more in depth, uh, let me know and you know tag me in the main page and I will try to find that SAS for you that shows you how I did it. Uh, I'm not going to go back and revisit it right this second. Um, you tell us what to do. Change the time. Okay. Yes, Mother's Day, I say, is a go. Missing this SAS. You guys are miserable when you don't have the sass. I found that out going on vacation. You guys were hysterical. Eh, I don't know if I want to do it on Saturday. It's kind of out of my thing. Out of my realm. I'm thinking just later in the afternoon because I'll be bored out of my mind by then. You know, because let's be honest and real. Mother's Day is a fantastic holiday. But Mama still has to work. Mama still has to do dishes. Mama still has to make food. Do grocery shopping. It does not stop. The world does not stop because I'm a mother. Yeah, you know, life still goes on. <laughs> the same as Father's Day. Um, did you get the green foam from Joe No. My green pad, everybody's asking me about my green pad. Um, this came, you can get this at most major vendors. This is a very thick, rubbery type thing. I use this for my slates. I use this for my ceramics, uh, ornaments, um, I use this for the acrylics because if you're going to do those those boat acrylics that I showed my picture earlier, um, mm, this, you need this, okay? This is for a lot of great of the hard, a lot of great use for the hard stubs rights. This is the 16 by 20. It is not cheap, okay? You can get smaller ones, but this is not cheap. I want to say this cost me like $130, I ain't going to lie. Um, but so well worth it if I am not going to screw up every substrate I ever make. Because of this, I was able to get better quality uh, prints and presses for, well, I should say presses for my slates. So save up your pennies and get yourself, and I got the bigger one because it fits my bigger press. Um, that's why I got the, the 16 by 20, so it fit that larger press no matter what I used. So this is definitely worth the money because, again, if I'm not wasting money, then I'm making money. So there you go. There's that. Um, do a Saturday sass. The green foam, I did not. That's foam. Um, I didn't even get the green foam. So, this I got from Hobby Lobby. This is a, like a pressing, I use this. This is over in the, by their pillows and stuff, that their inserts and whatnot over by their foam in Hobby Lobby. I got this. I want to say it was like two inches. Um, but I've gotten different types of foam. It does press down, so as it gets hot. Um, so there's that. Go ahead, you can take a tip. Um, so I, I, I've gotten two different types of foam from them. Yes, you can get the green, the green actual foam from Joann's. You can get those for pressing pillows and whatnot, but that is more of a rubber mat, so to speak. Thank you, what does your shirt say? Oh, for the love of Pete. Um, Love me? I have no idea. I have no idea what it says. Oh, love me with all my heart. Story? Or love me when my heart stops? I have no idea what it says. <laughs> Hold on, I don't know what it says. I'm gonna move the camera down. Come on, I don't know. Love me. Is up there. I don't know. Jen, I don't know. Why do you ask me those questions? <sighs> is that one of Stan's? No, this is not one of Stan's shirts. I do plan on pressing one of Stan's shirts, and it will be for my Memorial Day slash 4th of July type shirt that I plan on doing, and I plan on doing it with um, a sublimation, and I'm going to add some glitter to it because, you know, 
Oh, and people have also asked me about my, um, I don't know what it says. Love me until, oh, love me until my heart stops. <laughs> there you go. That's what my shirt says. Love me until my heart stops. Um, I'm going to be doing, sorry, scroll moment. Anyway, my glitter paper. Everybody's asked me about my glitter paper and where I get it. I have to tell you, they discontinued selling it. Um, the person that I usually get from on design bundles no longer carries it or has it. Um, so that was something I got back when they're running a whole huge special back in October because I had to go back and look and it's not even there anymore. So that's where I had gotten it that everybody asked me how I got such great quality glitter papers and I just happened to be at the right place at the right time clearly. So the like I said the designer that I get my elements from that's is no longer available. So I apologize I can't even share you the link for it or I would because I know that my glitter is rock awesome. No I didn't make it. <laughs> no, I do plan, like I said, I do plan on making my shirt from Stan. I can't wait to get my V-neck. I can't wait to make it and, and see how it looks. And you know what? I'm going to see if I can get away with not wearing a tank top under it. And that'll tell you whether or not it's see-through. I'll let you know. Because <laughs> when you're a plus-size girl, you worry about your curves and your, your whatnot. My 10-year anniversary was the first when my hubby bought me a 52 GCC cutter. Woohoo! It's better than a vacuum cleaner. Creative Market carries glitter paper. They just don't carry mine. I have to tell you, I've gotten some from there, Judy. Judy says, God, they do. They do. It just, it, mine is not on that one. Um, I looked, I searched on all the places I buy my elements from, and that one is no longer available. It came in a hundred pack um, of various shades. I have literally searched everywhere because it came from one particular designer, and it's just rock awesome amazing. So, oh, I saw we. It's not there anymore. I'm excited as well to order from Stan last night. Stan's amazing. So is Amy. I can't stress that enough um, for all of their stuff. So, let's do the recap, shall we? What we talked about. Based on what Miriam posts about her bracelets and stuff and how she thinks outside the box by taking Amy's bracelets and making them into something different, I took total inspiration from Marion Brooks and we made the necklace. So you go buy yourself a, um, beads, you go buy yourself, you can add it to any necklace that you already own is one of Amy's snap charms. You could add it to it, make it absolutely gorgeous for those who are late to the potty. And now you have a totally different look. These charms have this clasp, I'm gonna get up really close to show you, that you can literally take and just pull this open and then you could put it on any, sorry, it's kind of wrong. Focus. Oh, it's not focusing. Anyway, so there's a clasp here. There you go. There's a clasp right there um, for that to, you can pull that, pull it pry open. And then you can put this on anything. So there you go. I mean, how gorgeous is that? So pretty, right? So we talked about that and thinking outside the box moments. We also talked about stands listing this guy as we speak because he promised um, this is great for grilling this is great for camping why because it's not going to get as dirty and beaten up as the ones that amy does that i say are my house quality ones because hers are just luxurious and want to his are made to be beaten the hell out of i think that's the difference between the two one is more masculine one is more feminine um these are great i've used mine on the grill already and i did perfectly fine somebody asked me to test that out i did and it was amazing um, i gotta tell you though here's truth be told okay when stan showed me this i literally looked at him and went no no that is ugly that is the worst thing you could have ever bought and he goes will you just let me send it to you fine so he sends it to me I sat and looked and looked and looked and then all of a sudden it hit me. Well, guys don't want fluff, but I need a really good quality grilling one because I literally get all the stuff from the grill on my good ones and I can never get it off. And then they look disgusting and I'm trying to put them back in my kitchen and I just didn't want to do that anymore. And then, yes, I will say it, Stan was right. Um, 
this is far better. Why? Because this is a rubber backing and it's black. So you're not going to see all the schmutz that's all over it. It has a great handle for it. Make a matching towel, put a grommet in it so you can hang it from the bar that's on most grills. Add a really cute apron and now you've got a really good gift idea. So stand for the win on this one. I will give him that. Roll my eyes. So there's that. We talked about the tip and trick of a cutting board when you're having a clamshell. We talked about don't let somebody ruin your rainbow. If you have a clamshell, rock on, keep going. Don't let somebody tell you that a swing away is far better than a clamshell. I will tell you right now it's not. I just want you to have a heat press for the love of God. Have a heat press and buy quality substrates because if you're buying, you know, if you really want to make this work, know where you want to put your money. Put your money into your substrates, okay? you'll work up to getting a better, bigger or better press. Okay, so don't let anybody rain on your rainbow um, when it comes to a clamshell because you could do all things with a clamshell just like a swing away and I've proved it time and time again. Also, Amy had posted, or Amy has these. Um, yes, I had lining up issues. Um, that was a me thing. That's nobody else's thing. And I will point out my happy issues, okay? Yes, I did put a line on here just to cover that up a little bit, but you can get fabric markers and that can kind of blend it in too. Um, I have fabric markers that I use. any rate, when you're putting a design on these seat belt covers, you want it right here on the closest part where this is the, it attaches for the Velcro. This side is the soft side Velcro. This is the harder side Velcro. You want your design here. You only really want it here, all the wording, because when you go to fold it, you want to be able to see it. Now, I encourage these. Put them, and I have a couple different designs on my Etsy page for this um, that I've designed. As a first responder, this can mean a world of difference. This says medical data is inside. Today we made a pocket with one of Stan's lens cloths. We made a pocket to put in a business size business card in here so that it lets them know that there is data in here and if you notice it's all and the reason I use the lens cloth because it's really nice and pliable especially when you're putting it on and the fact that I can sub on it um, is a really great idea I just used the heat bond quarter inch and used my handy dandy little iron um, that I get at the craft store and this was a great way to add those little medical data information things to this so we talked about that we talked about my think outside the box moment with Amy's family boards and how I just need to get different hooks need to get a little bit bigger hooks I'll let you know what hooks I do find and I will post them if you want to make them into a utensil board that is a great um thing so there's that how you can use clipboards and whatnot while we're sitting here talking briefly and I'm catching everybody up, I'm going to sit really quick and I'm going to press the um, family board that I got from Ashley. Um, I just added my own wording. It's one of her frames. Give me a second. Just lining, lining some stuff up here. Let's get this on the board. give it a quick pre-press which I just did a quick pre-press put it in there it's all set we're gonna press that and see how that comes out but that's how you can make those family boards turn into a utensil board um, you can actually if you use these hooks it can become a keychain holder for your house it's 12 but that I mean maybe you have a large household so you can put a lot of things on there leashes and whatnot you just change the hooks out that's all I encourage you to do um, yeah, a lot of people don't, I for the, the cardboard trick that I use for the clamshell, because um, I have the 15 by 15, is I put just a piece of cardstock that I fold three times under the front edge, and that gives it enough of a of a wedge in order to put the enough pressure on the clipboard, where, or not clipboard, but on the um, cutting board. Mm, does Stan have fabric, canvas fabric? Not at the moment. Um, you can get it at Joann's though. To be honest with you, give me one second. Oh, let me tell you, Ash. Let me tell you about Ashley Dodd for two seconds. Let me tell you about the Dodster. Okay, Miss Ashley Dodd. 
makes these frame things. Okay, everybody knows I'm, I'm not gonna burn in my hand today. If you haven't, so I changed the lettering on mine because I'm crazy. Added some shadowing. I'm sorry, got the lighting in my shop right now. How cool is that? Won't that look really cool? It's so realistic looking too. That's the, the beautiful part of it. So this is one of Amy's family boards. This will become my utensil board. I will add some ribbon. Um, it matches my kitchen. Absolutely stunning. The frame you can find from Ashley Dodd store, Aparicium. Um, she has it there. Um, oh yeah, the poly canvas sand stacks. Right. I always forget about those. Thanks, John. Um, the poly canvas Santa sacks you can use, which I have somewhere. Um, the poly canvas Santa sacks. So when you cut them out and open, you now have that canvas. That's great. Especially if you're learning, it's also great for testing. Um, they're very inexpensive. So yes, get the Santa sack, just literally cut this edge and this edge and open it up and now you've got I think it's over a yard of fabric for peanuts on the dollar um, and that's one way to use something else for something else so go ahead and get those I forget those all the time thank you Jen for reminding me um, because you can do those so if you're looking for something get into stand shop while you're shopping for towels and baby cloths and bibs and all of that other stuff grab some of the poly canvas Santa sacks those are great for testing and making signs so her frames are amazing, right? I know, man. Someday I want to be Ashley Dawn. I tell her that all the time. I want to be her and Margo. You're asking me what I'm doing. Well, I'm flipping it over and I'm pressing it again. What you can do with these family boards, too, is I will flip it over, give it another press. When you're pre-pressing it, too, it helps it stay flat, too. Um, press it on both sides of the family board. Um, just because it is MDF and it's so long, um, you can put something on it. People are like, oh, why is it bowing? Well, that's because one, it's hot. Two, it needs to settle down. So keep that in mind when you're doing those. Don't freak out over it. Um, that's just the nature of MDF. As soon as you get it, um, larger than the, the actual item, this is hot. I tell you, <laughs> as soon as you get it larger, you know, a larger piece, it does have that effect on it. It's not like an ornament. You won't necessarily see it with an ornament. Um, so there you go. Um, so we also talked about me moving the sass for next Sunday being Mother's Day to the afternoon because this mama plans on spending some time with her family. Um, so I plan doing it in the afternoon. It'll be a shortened version. I'm not even sure what we're going to talk about or what you want me to talk about. Um, but I know we're probably going to talk about Memorial Day um, and how we can gear up for Memorial Day and how you can bring your ideas in further going into a whole bunch of other different areas. So we're going to talk about that. Um, That'll be on Sunday. I don't know what else we'll talk about because it all depends on what you guys ask for. So let me know. Um, oh, you know what? I'll grab one of Sans Santa sacks too, and I will show you what you can do with those. Um, I believe I have some in my, my stash here. So I'm thinking I should really de-stash some of my items. I was looking at a lot of my items. Boy, do I have a lot of stuff. To really de-stash and make sample boxes of stuff that I grab from Amy and Stan and just make a sample box and give it away. Maybe that, ooh, maybe that's what I'll do. I don't know. Maybe Nikki's favorite things. Oh, nope, just got a whole idea. I can't do it for next week, but I will do it some point. It'll be Nikki's favorite things. Maybe that'll come in my Christmas in July special when we're down. So there you go. If you notice as it cools and you reshape it and whatnot, it is stunning. I mean, when you go to put this, I mean, check that out. Isn't that going to look really cool? Totally farmhouse country right there. Give me some love. Show me the love. And now I'm going to make a matching towel to go with it. So I have the matching set. It'll have um, all this whole farmhouse type theme going on to it to match my kitchen. Um, it's absolutely stunning. Love it. Love it. Like it, please. Oh, come on. I want to see some hearts. So there we go. Are we good? Awesome. Anyway, it was a kind of a short and condensed one. Not a lot of stuff or fluff. Um, just some business sense websites versus Etsy. If you're thinking about Etsy, just jump. 
it's, it's not going to cost you any more than doing a website and it's probably going to take you a lot less time. So jump there. Um, not a lot of content today and I do apologize for that. There are some stuff, some little tips and tricks that I hope you guys got. So I do appreciate and love all that you guys do for me. Let me know in the comments if you are something that you're struggling on and it's just not coming out right. I will do my due diligence to try to help you. Um, until next time, I'm going to put the poll up as soon as I get off here and put the poll up of does su Sunday or Saturday afternoon work for everybody or should Nikki take the day off? I have a feeling Nikki taking the day off is not going to get very many votes. I got to be honest. So until then, thank you guys for everything. You guys are truly a blessing to my life and uh, thank you for supporting us. Um, in all that we do. Until then, you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. This has been the SAS for Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, 2019. Until then, we'll see you guys soon. Bye.